It's Kelly from Shirley's Cottage. Does that make any sense? Um, I'm here I, on Sundays. I uh, am reading columns that my mom wrote for the Cambridge newspaper for 17 years. She thinks she wrote about a thousand of these. And um, gratefully, thankfully, hallelujah, my mom is still alive and with us. And uh, instead of you know, waiting till something happens to her. I thought, wouldn't it be fun for her to enjoy this too while, while she's still around? Um, not that I think you're going anywhere soon, Mom. I just thought I'd say we're lucky to have you. Um, so anyway, I'm actually doing this on Saturday the 19th, and then I'll post it tomorrow on Sunday the 20th. And I was looking for, I know there is a... Um, an article about my niece Jade. There's several of them, but today's Jade's birthday. So happy birthday, Jade. I wanted to do the one for Jade's birthday today, and lo and behold, I cannot find it right now. Um, again, I have a big tub that I have to go through and try to organize, um, yeah, when I get time to do that. So anyway, I am I was lucky enough to find one for Christmas. I um, am not reading these ahead of time. So if the reading doesn't go smoothly, that is why. I'm just reading them. I, I kind of want to read them as I read them too and, and be surprised. So this one, you know, I don't have a date on this one. It was cut off and cut out. So maybe, um, maybe we can figure it out as we read along. So from Shirley's Cottage. And this one's sometime around Christmas. <laughs> um, this is the first Christmas we will not all be together in our old home for the holidays. Now the old house is sold and Kelly and her family will be decorating a cactus in Arizona. Deb and Jade will be having Christmas Eve for us at their house and we will miss being together and losing some of the old traditions. At the same time, I look forward to new ones, a new recipe, a toast, maybe a walk on the lake, something that in years to come we will say, do you remember the first time we did this at our first Christmas at the lake? I think I'm a little choked up because um, I remember that the year that it was the last Christmas at our house in St. Charles. And um, anyway, times change. When I was growing up, my folks had a tavern. My dad closed at 7 p.m. on Christmas Eve. Anyone there at close was invited home with my dad. He figured if someone was sitting in a tavern alone on Christmas Eve, they needed a place to go. Everyone that came into the house that night got a little gift. It was a tradition for years. And the food? Before midnight, there are shrimp, tuna, noodles, fish balls, fish balls. What are fish? <laughs> fish balls. <laughs> deviled eggs, lots of other dishes, but no meat until after midnight mass. Before we could eat anything, we had to break bread. Holy bread my grandparents had brought, blessed by the priest. After midnight, my mom brought out the sauerkraut with bacon, kielbasa, sausage, beef, and pork, potato pudding, and Lithuanian desserts. When my mom could no longer cook, it was our turn. My sister and I would trade off years. Tra tradition sometimes evolves. If it works for you, do it again. We had a fireplace. My mom made Christmas stockings for everyone, even the dogs. The pictures we took of my little kids in front of the burning fireplace with six stockings became a tradition. I'm having a little trouble reading. Sorry. Okay. It ended last year with my grown kids and their kids and what dogs would stay still. 19 stockings and the fireplace. The first year I had Christmas Eve, I made meatballs from a recipe I got from my best friend, Judy. She said it was no fail. They would always be moist and tender. I was hesitant because the meatballs I made up to then, you could paint white and use for golf balls. Judy was right, they have always turned out. I made the sauce that I put on chicken and pork and mom's meatballs became a tradition. I only make them on holidays. I don't think they would be the same any other time. Mom's meatballs from Judy's recipe. We have these every year, they are so good. 
Okay, you'll need three to four pounds of ground beef. One pound of pork added makes it better, it really does. Six to eight slices of bread. I feel like I've read this one before, but I, I guess maybe not. Six to eight, if I did, <laughs> it's the second time around. Maybe I just remember this article. Six to eight slices of bread dried and made into very large cubes. Two cans evaporated milk, some regular milk, three eggs, one package of onion soup mix for the sauce mix, two packages of onion soup mix, one 16 ounce Russian dressing, and one 16 ounce apricot preserves. Soak the bread in the evaporated milk. Use a little regular milk of, if it's too dry. Squeeze moisture out of bread and add to the meat with package onion soup and eggs. Whoops. Brown meatballs in frying pan. Don't overcook. Half done is fine unless you plan to freeze them for a later time. Drain on paper towel and place in shallow baking pan. Pour sauce over meatballs. Put in 300 degree oven uncooked. Un put in 300 degree oven uncovered 30 to 40 minutes. Stir a few times until sauce gets glazed. Cover and keep warm or transfer to a warm crock pot. Enjoy one of our traditions. Mom, <laughs> I'm looking forward to these meatballs. I hope you're making them. Christmas is next week and we want leftovers to bring home. So um, to that, I will say everyone who's been following and looking forward to my mom's uh, columns and recipes. Merry, Merry Christmas from her and me and my um, whole family. And um, I guess kind of a time that we all miss the ones that aren't with us. My dad, my Graham. So thank you and Merry Christmas. I had to come back and say it to my aunt and my grandpa. Um, just Merry Christmas, everyone. Bye-bye.